Hi, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to have a look round Loch Dew, my uh, slice of the Scottish Highlands that literally sits above my bench. I can be working down here, glance up, and I can get lost in the scene. Um, it's funny, it's actually the home of, or the original home of Ponte Dulice, which was built uh, to fit in that space above my desk uh, before Beaverbrook above uh, was built. Once Beaverbrook was built, it uh, like, um, Ponte Dulice didn't fit, that had to slide over to this side of the workshop. Uh, and the space that it left was filled up with these sort of storage containers and there's various other things that were stored there. And uh, I've really missed being able to just glance up and, and see something more interesting or more inspiring. And so the idea of building something in that space uh, turned into Loch Dew, um, which is fictional, but is uh, my little slice of, uh, of make-believe, I suppose. And uh, But it connects through my uh, my love of uh, of Scott Rail and, and Scottish locomotives and large logo class 37s. Um, I've been to Carl Lock Alsh, I love Tamish Macbeth, and so all those things sort of merged together. Um, and through the medium of model railways, I've created my own little piece of art here. Um, and it's an absolutely wonderful place to get lost and to imagine. So let me take you uh, take you back to the late 1980s. Uh, let's go have a look round. So, welcome to Lock Dew. The layout itself is about 60 centimetres by 20. Fictitious, as I say, but drawing influence from memories of visiting Carl of Loch Alsh, of watching Hamish Macbeth as a, uh, as a youngster, of poring over Ian Allen colour albums at the, uh, at the library and really pausing on the Scottish photos and having a bit of a thing for, as I say, for large logo class 37s. So the intra, uh, the approach to the station, very much Kyle uh, in, in style and design, as is the setting um, on a harbour promontory. The station building is based on Highland practice, but much reduced to fit the space but I hope still captures the feel of of the area and you instantly feel Scotland when you see it. The little building down by the post bus um, front uh, front right is actually one I saw at Greg Newer on the Isle of Mull uh, at the harbour there and I just thought it's interesting shape and style would, would suit the harbour location here on the layout. Panning through you'll see some of the scratch built items those little red bins and the yellow wall sign taken from photos I've seen of the area in the 1980s. And the contrasting colours, the bright yellows and the bright reds are just little spots in the picture, aren't they? Everything else is very muted and faded. Um, Hamish Macbeth's Land Rover is a uh, much, much modified um, Oxford model. And just a, a bog standard Farish 37 that I've lowered on its bogies and super detailed the, uh, the buffer beams when I added the DG couplings. At this end of the layout, you'll see uh, a typical Scottish croft. And th thanks to uh, another fantastic model of Brian at Brayside Models, he sent me some dimensions and drawings to, to begin to work from for that building. And actually, you'll notice, I'll, uh, I'll put a clip in later, you'll notice he himself is stood outside the door. Um, and then next to there, there's a tiny little road sign. There's a couple of little um, subtle details that tell the story of the location of the layout and that road sign says Inverness and Dunbracken. And Dunbracken is another location from Hamish Macbeth. It's also the uh, the title of a, of a good friend's 009 layout. So uh, so that's a nod to, to those both. The signs actually, the station signs and the road signs aren't paper. They are water slide decals applied over styrene. I think you get a much neater appearance there. But uh, the, the walls, um, ice cream sign and the little map on the end of the station building their paper so you can get away with all sorts especially when it's inside so not much to it it is operational but it doesn't get operation it doesn't get used in that way it's just somewhere wonderful to come and look at for a couple of minutes um, I quite often just reposition the locomotive and carriages in different positions by hand uh, but if if the need ever arose uh, the left hand end of the layout is open um, and the track through to the rear siding is also open 
it would just need a small um, fiddle yard constructing so it could be taken out and shown in an operational state. All the track work is, of course, British Fine Scale Code 40 Bullhead. Uh, the turnout is from one of their kits. So, there you have it. Just a brief overview of Lock 2. I'll leave you with some uh, stills and, uh, and maybe some soft audio over the top just to set the tone. But I hope you've enjoyed your little visit. And um, I'm sure I'll put more about the layout on the blog over the time, over the coming months. If you've enjoyed watching, there's plenty more of this on the channel. I'd really appreciate it if you haven't done of subscribing, liking. I love the comments that people leave and I love engaging with them. So if you've got any questions or thoughts, then, then do get in touch. Otherwise, until next time, thanks. Thanks again. See you again soon.